guess who's back in the house? I hope that you guys are having a great day. Um, I wanted to actually give a review of season two of Pose. I just watched episode one, and we start off with Blanca and Pray Tell on a ferry going to Heart Island. Heart Island is an island in the Bronx in New York, and I had never heard of Heart Island. Heart Island is where people who, when they died, their bodies were unclaimed at the morgue, or people who were gay or in the LGBT community, they weren't buried in regular grave sites. They were buried at Heart Island if they died in New York. And their bodies were put in a... Um, wooden boxes and people who died of AIDS they were buried together and separated from the other people whose bodies were unclaimed and there was a very kind of like disturbing uh, statement that a woman who worked at the office at the burial site said and I just wanted to read it um, they were people who died of AIDS were quarantined and put together because we don't want them affecting anyone else. I wasn't that old um, in 1990 and I, I really didn't, I didn't know about AIDS and HIV at the time, um, but it breaks my heart um, how people who had AIDS were treated during that time. Um, AIDS, uh, the first time the word AIDS was used was in 1983 under the Reagan administration. Three years into Reagan's administration, or when scientists discovered um, what, it, they gave the um, AIDS the term, it was called GRID, um, which was like gay-related immune deficiency disease. I believe that's um, what the acronym stood for. And uh, the woman at the Heart Island office went on to say, we don't know how this is spread. What I love about the writers of Pose is that they are able to insert history into every single episode, history, facts, and narratives of people in the LGBT community. And I love that. Um, I once met, well, twice actually, um, um, Our Lady J, who is one of the writers for the show, an out proud trans woman. She spoke at one of my writing workshops at an arts camp in Malibu. And she, uh, at, I think it was like two years ago that she spoke. And she told my class that um, she was working on a project that we all were going to love. And um, that particular class that I was teaching, it's um, for young adults um, between 13 to 20 who are impacted and affected by HIV and AIDS. And, or, or they are in the LGBTQ plus community. And so um, she was really excited. She couldn't tell us any details about the project, but she said that we were going to love it. And fast forward, I'm such a huge fan. Um, and so next in the episode, Pray Tell and Blanca um, come across like a makeshift memorial with uh, different rocks where people have come to grieve, mourn, and remember those people lost to AIDS, and they actually give them um, headstones that they use marker to write their names and their birth dates and death dates. Um, and so I thought that that was such a powerful scene as a way to remember those who were lost, lost those who were orphaned, um, by their family, and then later AIDS. 
fast forward in the episode, Sandra Bernhard plays a nurse on Pose. Blanca goes to see her so she can understand her results from her latest uh, blood work. Sandra tells her that her CD4, um, which is uh, a T cell count, that they've dropped and her diagnosis is changed from HIV positive to having full-blown AIDS. And again, this is such a powerful moment. I've seen a number of movies that deal with AIDS, but Pose has a way of just laying everything on the table. It's bare bones, and I love that. And as a viewer, I am in the room with Blanca at that moment and I'm feeling everything that she feels it's well acted beautifully written but also um, it gives us everything we need with the language of the script in the script and I really appreciate that that every word counts and every word matters that they give to the actors. And so um, Sandra's character tells Blanca that she needs to start taking AZT and she and other nurses, doctors, what happens is that after someone who is white and wealthy, uh, when they're close to dying, she and a group of people and um, her girlfriend, we learn later, go to their homes and actually take their AZT medication and, um, and um, any other medication that they have, including antibiotics, and they give it to people who can't afford the AZT medication. AZT was expensive during that time, during the early 80s and the early 90s. Um, you had to be extremely affluent, white, privileged to afford it, or uh, a successful um, basketball player, football player, baseball player, to afford it. So um, Blanca is panicking and she uh, states that, you know, she might, you know, die within six months. And so Sandra Bernhardt's character tells her if she takes the medication, even though it is um, risky that she will live. Um, so fast forward, uh, we see a cab pull up to the pier where Angel, Angel um, is working the block. And so in the cab, it's Blanca. And she tells Blanca that she is going to take her to an audition for um, some type of modeling competition and I believe it's through Ford Modeling Agency and so they go um, Angel talks to the Ford representative and the Ford representative tell her that she's pretty but she needs professional photographs in order to advance in the competition so she gives her the number and address of a photographer to give her more professional photos and I, I really loved um, the picture that Blanca showed her or the actual magazine page because it really looked like an early 90s advertisement, the back of it, from a magazine during that time. My mother used to be obsessed with Vogue magazine. She had hundreds in her bedroom and I love flipping through them because um, it was just like... Um, something it was not a part of our life like I grew up very poor and it was a um, an, an amazing glimpse into the lives of the rich famous and beautiful and so I really loved um, the graphic design of the back of the uh, modeling casting call and so uh, fast forward uh, we go to a funeral 
and oh wait one thing that I forgot to mention is that um, before that scene we get um, a ballroom scene and so I believe the category is runway realness and Angel, An Angel, oh my gosh, Angel wins the category and then we uh, move into the scene at the pier. And I really liked the juxtaposition of seeing Angel in a glamorous gold gown being applauded by her peers in the ballroom community and then actually being at the pier because we get the harsh reality of being orphaned, being a brown person, being poor or having lack of resources. And so I really um, liked that because that is the reality for some people in the ballroom community. And that's why houses were created that uh, brown, poor people who were kicked out of their homes, they could recreate their own family. And that's why the ballroom scene has lasted from the 70s until today. And so I thought that um, that was such a great scene. And so then fast forward, we go to a memorial for someone who has died of AIDS. And um, Sandra Bernhardt's character shows up and she takes Pray Tell from the funeral to his very first act up meeting. And um, he was hesitant because he said that, you know, this is a group of a group for privileged white people. And she says that is not what ACT UP is about. ACT UP is was formed because they believe that silence equals death in uh, the AIDS movement. And not enough was happening because people believed it was a quote unquote gay disease and there wasn't enough research happening um, it wasn't getting a lot of funding and so ACT UP was birth and at the meeting they're going to have a die-in at a Catholic church um, the, the, um, the following Sunday and so pray tell um, is really moved by what he hears and he's he's all in and so he then recruits Blanca to tell all of the kids in the house that they have to go to the dine-in and so we we learn that Angel makes it to the next round for the modeling agency and so then at the table, there is a conversation that Blanca is having because she wants to see her kids succeed. And so she tells Damon that he is going to uh, start teaching Vogue at the local YMCA. And uh, she tells everyone about um, Angel has kind of like moved, moved up in the uh, modeling competition. And so there's a conversation about mainstream acceptance of gay culture. Pray Tell is of the older generation and he feels that it's kind of like silly that with, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that we start off um, one of the scenes with the song, Madonna song, Vogue playing at the nail salon where Blanca works. And so Blanca feels as if kind of like this major movement is going to happen where the ballroom scene will be recognized by mainstream media. He's telling them that it's not going to happen, that they have to live in reality and that mainstream is the opposite of gay culture and they will not be accepted. And so I really thought that that was kind of like an important, uh, an important conversation to have because it was the conversation that was happening during that time, how Madonna, you know, used this song, used this video 
and I believe that all of the Vogers in her music video for Vogue actually came from the house and ball community. And one of the, uh, it was, I think, two members from the House of Extravaganza. Um, and I do believe that one of the dancers from that video is one of the judges that we see on Pose in the ballroom scenes. And so I really kind of like love that uh, Blanca is really pushing her children to be the best versions of themselves. We all need that house mother to push us to be our best. Um, and so at the table, no one wants to go to the ACT UP meeting, but Blanca insists that they will go as a family, um, that they never have reservations where they walk house in the ballroom, um, in the ballroom categories. And so she says that, you know, this is what is more important. This is more important than ballroom. This is more important than acceptance from mainstream culture. This is about their lives. So I really like that. Um, Blanca quits her job at the nail salon because uh, the owner is trying to get her to work the day of the die-in protest. So she quits and in that conversation, the nail salon owner makes a very transphobic comment and um, Blanca says that you know she will open up her own salon and that was very eye-opening um, this show has really opened my eyes up to the transphobia um, that exists I, I knew it was always there in kind of like mainstream society, but also exists in the gay community. I loved in the last season um, how they portrayed that trans women were not accepted into gay men's spaces, um, which I never, I never knew that. Um, I thought that kind of like as a community, we all have similar experiences of not being accepted, of dealing with homophobia, transphobia, racism, um, that, that we would allow everyone in the community to be a part of our spaces. And so um, I really like that they're able to show uh, transphobia in this show. So, uh, the protest happens at the church and um, it's recorded by a news crew and um, it really gives us a glimpse into the activism of the organization ACT UP and I really appreciated that. Um, I had heard about their die-ins and um, unfortunately some of the characters on the show are arrested like Pray Tell and um, they say that a hundred people were arrested at this protest. And it's very unfortunate um, that these things would happen, that these people were fighting for their lives and they were protesting peacefully and were then brutalized and arrested for that. And so, um, again, I really appreciate appreciated this history moment in the episode. So then we see Angel um, getting prepared to shoot with the photographer that the representative from Ford Modeling Agency recommended her to go to. And he tells everyone to clear the room so he can talk to Angel. He recognizes her from the pier and he says that um, she has to pay for more than one session. She can't afford it, so he tells her that he will take um, pictures of her for his private collection. And I had a complete Tracy Africa flashback. I'm not sure if um, many of you know about Tracy Africa. Tracy Africa was the first, or maybe I should say this, one of the first trans 
female supermodels. Tracy Africa, uh, I forget how she was discovered, but she was a very successful model, I believe during the late 70s, early 80s. And she was on the a box for Clairol hair color, which is major. She was featured in a ton of magazines. Um, she even did successful print ad work. And so one day, after kind of like um, a very successful career, she was at a photo shoot and one of the, I believe it was a photographer's assistant, quote unquote, clocked her. And this was a photo shoot for Ebony magazine. The assistant clocks her and, uh, and tells Susan Johnson, which I don't, I don't know her position at the time, but Susan Johnson for a very long time um, was a huge editor at Ebony. He tells Susan Johnson that Tracy um, is a trans person and that um, she does not deserve to be there. Susan had her fired and had her modeling career ruined. When I heard this, um, my heart broke. Um, Again, um, please Google uh, Tracy Africa and just see how just like, she's just devastatingly beautiful. And um, she is someone who is a hero in the trans community uh, for being out and proud. And recently, years later, she actually was featured on another Clairol hair color box. How powerful is that? That if someone does out you, ruins your career, you can still be successful. And so um, I, I'm not sure if, if Tracy... Um, Africa inspired that episode, but um, it really reminded me of that. And so um, Angel takes these gorgeous photographs with the photographer, and then he asks to take naked pictures of her um, showing all of her body, and she feels very uncomfortable. Um, and it's al almost like um, it reminded me of something that could happen um, to a model today that um, you're very vulnerable, like you want to be taken seriously by having professional photographs and then the, a photographer can take advantage of you. And so uh, that was um, just a powerful image of kind of like um, the difference between power between a photographer and a model and someone who just wants to take advantage of another person for their own pleasure. Uh, so we then go to another ballroom scene and the category is French Revolution. And we have the two members of the House of Ferocity, which I, I forget their names, um, but <laughs> Pretel calls them something to the effect of like, um, French Revolution um, hookers and he tells them that they need to try better and uh, they run out. Electra comes in and I'm not sure if I'm not sure if these categories are based on actual categories that have happened in the past. Electra comes in in the style of Ru Rucoco. She has on this um, gray white Marie Antoinette inspired wig. She's wearing a pink bodice um, with um, lace embellishments and these kind of like oversized sleeves, a silver belt. And she has on a, um, I believe it's called um, 
a hoop skirt cage or crinoline. Um, I believe that's what it's called. And the very bottom of the cage spins and it has plastic horses. There are two men that come out with her. One of them places a giant pink bow on her back and the other is feeding her cake. One of the guys tries to eat the cake. She slaps his hand and the other one starts pulling on her sleeve and puts her in a guillotine and they throw a plastic dummy head out. <laughs> that was classic ballroom, classic high drama, and I lived for it. And so Pray Tell is not impressed because Electra did not show up to the dying protest. He calls her out and throws her trophy in front of her feet. <sighs> I was not expecting that. He, in the end, he storms out. He tells her to wake up. And that was powerful because um, it's Pride Month, June, and there are Pride celebrations happening across the world. The very first Pride was a riot and everyone in the community needs to remember that we have been given so much in this day and age that we can walk down the street, hold hands, kiss, um, live our authentic lives. And it is because of our elders in the community who fought for our rights. And so Pretel tells her that Everyone is fighting for their lives and she needs to stand up and fight back as well because she could be dead the next day. Again, another, this whole episode, incredible. It's a departure from the very first episode from season one, which is my favorite episode thus far because it is so over the top. So beautiful, well written. Um, then um, we go to oh, before I forget, um, Pretel storms out, and he tells the next commentator to come up on stage, and the commentator's name in the show is Jack. His real name in life is Jack Mizrahi. And he is one of the most respected commentators in the scene. Um, he has probably walked every category imaginable in the scene. And I love, I love that they use actual people from the house and ball community for pose. Um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking his name. Um, Twiggy Garcon is one of the consultants from the show. And Twiggy is in the house of Garcon. And um, they also use other consultants from the house and ballroom community. And I'm sure everyone at this point knows that um, all of the trans characters on the show are also trans. So that's important to know if you didn't know that. Um, and so um, the next category is, I believe it's um, Vogue Runway or Runway Wellness. Uh, there are three girls in the category. Angel wins. She gets the trophy and she's very emotional about it. And so she runs out, breaks down and cries. She tells Poppy and her mother Blanca about the incident with the photographer. They go hardcore, beat up the photographer and get the photographs from his studio. Then Angel goes to um, Ford to deliver the new photographs that she's taken with the photographer. And she tells the representative that you don't know what I've done to get here. She advances to the top 10 of the competition. And so um, then um, fast forward, they're having dinner the family. Electra comes in late. She has an attitude. She quits the house 
and then goes to join um, her former two daughters in their home. And so I cannot wait to see the next episode, episode two. And so I will do another review for that episode. So I hope that you guys have uh, liked this review. It's my first review of Pose. Um, I'll be watching um, all season long to know what happens. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Also, um, I wanna thank all of my new subscribers. Um, it means a lot to me that you've chosen to subscribe to my channel. Um, come back for greater content. I, will, I post a lot of pride videos. I, po I post uh, reviews of Drag Race and I'll be posting reviews of Pose. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section um, about this episode of Pose. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Besos. Good night.